Resistivity is an intrinsic property of every different kind of a conductor. If it's a bad conductor, it seems to have a very high resistivity. If it's a good conductor, it seems to have a low resistivity. Now, what exactly is this resistivity? Before that, let's explore how current flow happens. Remember the metaphor, water flow is equivalent to current flow? Great, so now I have almost equal volumes of water in both these bottles. Question to you, if I tilt them, this bottle which has a much wider region opening, this bottle which has much lower opening, assuming I have gotten the proportions right and there's equal masses, equal mass particles, which one of the two do you think will empty faster? Any guesses? I think very intuitively you are making the right guess. So at the count of three, two, one, and... Okay, that was pretty easy actually. Equal masses and pretty much equal potential energy, right? They were at the same height. Why is it that this guy had a lot more... Wait, should I say that he had a lot more particles flowing through? Or should I say that he had particles flowing through quicker? This bottle, I know I said he, but you get what I'm saying. This bottle with the wider opening managed to create a better path for flow of these particles, right? What if I had done the same experiment with the closed bottle? Quick sidestep. There's no particles flowing out. First up, it doesn't matter if there is mass, doesn't matter if it's at a high gravitational potential. It matters very much that there is a path for particles to flow out so that the particles flow out. Extending this onto electricity, it doesn't matter how much potential energy I have in a system, V, E, whatever that is. It doesn't matter what is the magnitude or quantity of charge that I have, Q. If I don't have a path for charged particles, or in this case, mass particles to flow, there will not be current, right? With that out of the way, with the larger cross-section, turns out that there was a much larger possibility or much, much more space for the water molecules to flow out from as compared to a smaller opening as it was in this bottle, right? Have you, have you ever played with that? Have you ever connected a garden hose to a tap? Now, through a smaller hose, turns out that the particles or the water flows out much quicker than through a very long hose, right? This is very similar to how electrons and resistance behaves in a conductor, in fact. Turns out that if I have a good conductor, take a metal, for example, if the conductor is fat, a stout, the electrons that are present inside of the conductor, the fast-moving electrons that are present inside the conductor, when there is an electrical field or a potential difference that's applied, they get to move much quicker at a much, much higher rate than if the conductor were of a thin cross-section. What is rate of flow of charges? Current, right? So the, the wider the cross-section of a conductor, the greater the possibility of current. If there's a greater current, and Ohm's law tells us V equals IR, greater current for that potential difference implies a lower resistance offered by the material, right? And this guy, where we saw a lower cross-section which caused a much slower rate of flow of these water molecules, in as much if I had a thin conductor, a very slender conductor, turns out that I in V equals IR is very less, and that means resistance offered must be very, very large, right? I don't need to just change the material if I want to get a different resistance of a component inside of an electrical circuit. All I need to do is change the dimensions of that particular resisting component. If you like this video, and if you want to watch more videos like these, hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy learning this way, download Byju's, the all new and personalized learning app.